In custom car audio fabrication, one of the most important things to having a perfect beauty panel is gap control. All of the different wood pieces that we're building will be wrapped in vinyl or wrapped in carpet or maybe even painted. Each of these different finishes has a different thickness. So what advanced custom fabrication techniques can we use to make all of our pieces fit together perfectly. There's also something that's important that we do to the back of the pieces that is often mistakenly forgotten. Also, how could we make a gap for something like an LED strip that we're gonna use to light up our amplifiers? All of this and more is coming up in this Build Log video. What's up my fabrication family? Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. On this channel, I do reviews, tutorials, and car audio builds just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Also, if you're just now joining for the build, make sure that you check out all the other videos leading up to this one here. Let's head on over to the trunk of the vehicle. So before we get started here, one of the first things that I wanna point out before I start taking these out of the vehicle to work on them is these two gaps right here are pretty tight right now. And ultimately this surface is gonna be wrapped in carpet. This is gonna be wrapped in carpet, which will transition to here. This will be vinyl and this will be vinyl these two different kinds of vinyl right here. Now, the reason I'm pointing that out is because this gap is so tight right now, I'm not gonna be able to have a thickness of carpet on each side. So I'm actually going to need to enlarge this gap a little bit, and I'll do that by removing material from this centerpiece on both sides. I have a larger gap here because this side's gonna be carpet and this side's gonna be vinyl. I have a tighter gap between these because this is gonna be vinyl and this is gonna be vinyl, and vinyl is much thinner than carpet. In other words, you only need that thin of a gap rather than this thick gap. So let's start with carpet. Usually for two layers of carpet, you'll want a 3 16 inch gap. And right now I approximate that my gap between those two pieces is about 1 16 so I need to add an eighth to that, which is also 2 16 so I'm gonna grab this eighth inch rabbit bit. Now before we get started making this cut, I'm gonna adjust the height of this about halfway up the piece of wood. All right, now we're gonna make one pass. So this created this step that you see here, which has shrunken the size down. Now we need to get rid of that little edge right here. So what I'll do is I'll load in a flush trim bit to get rid of it and I'll just flush trim this surface. So it's kind of hard to tell without this being in the vehicle, but I basically simulated to show what I just did. This gap is now a lot larger where I can actually fit two layers of carpet in between. So next up, we need to do some edge profiling on these pieces. I'm going to chamfer this. And if you guys remember from my previous video on this guy right here, I actually did this cool little trick where I use a sacrificial piece. That way this point comes all the way down into that surface. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing with this here. And what I've actually already done is there's a separate piece stuck to it here. And that's gonna serve as my sacrificial edge. That way I can maximize the cut of the chamfer. So I'm gonna be chamfering this piece around the outside so that it can sit like so, and the carpet will come up onto that, and then that's where my transition will be from carpet to vinyl. So this piece will stay completely like it is, but these two pieces will also need to have a chamfer applied on the inside. So here you can kind of see I have that sacrificial piece on top and it's maximizing the cut because I have the bearing riding right at the bottom of it. So 
So there we have our chamfer. Once I peel away the sacrificial board, that cut is gonna be completely maximized. So I wanna point out that I pried away from the inside of the shape, and the reason for doing that is you don't wanna mess up this nice sharp edge. So there we have it, that hard edge is maximized just like this one was. And now while I still have the chamfer bit loaded up, I'm gonna go ahead and chamfer these. So I've now got these pieces completely chamfered. Fit in like this. There we go. We have everything all completely gapped for the different materials that we're gonna be using. But we've only taken care of the gaps that are between the different pieces. What we need to do now is actually account for gaps on the back of pieces. Now you might be wondering why. The reason that we need to account for materials on the back side of these is, for instance, on these rings, you're going to be able to see that edge. So we don't necessarily wanna just wrap down to that edge and then cut it. We wanna be able to wrap the material around to the back side of it. Now, if we were to take this existing ring and wrap around to the back side of it, what would happen is when we sit it in here, that thickness of vinyl is actually gonna raise it a slight amount where it's not gonna be where it's originally intended. So by removing material from the back side, we're gonna give ourselves a clearance for that vinyl material to wrap around the back. And the same is gonna be for this carpet piece, for these guys that are wrapped on the sides. The whole goal here is for everything to fit together like we originally machined it without the material having any effect on that. Additionally, on the inside of these, I'm actually gonna be doing some pressed metal mesh which will actually sit over the top of the amplifiers. And I need to have a clearance for that as well. So I'm also gonna be rabbiting into this base piece of wood. Let's do it. To do this, I'm gonna be using this 3 8 inch rabbiting bit for my show sponsor, Mobile Solutions. And what's cool about this particular bit is you can see it has a really small bearing. And what's nice about that is we'll actually be able to get in to these tight radiuses on some of these shapes. Now with these table mounted router lifts, I'm actually able to control how high the router bit is out of the table. And what's nice about this is since I'm actually gonna be wrapping these in different materials, I can change the height of the bit and the depth of the cut, if you will, based on the different materials that I'm gonna be using. So on this ring, I'm gonna be wrapping it with vinyl. So in order to create a gap, I'm actually gonna do a thickness of about 130 seconds, maybe just a little bit more. So I do that by looking at the edge of the table and making sure that the router bit is not sticking out the top of the table. And then I take a note of this adjustment here and I adjust 1 32nd, a little bit more above. We should be good to go. So you can see how that leaves a nice little clearance for me to wrap around the back side. And what's cool is when we actually wrap this, I can stick the vinyl against this and then I have a nice hard edge to actually cut the vinyl. It even gives the back side of our piece a really nice professional look. Now you may be wondering, why did I only do the inside? The reason for that is I can get away with not having a rabbited edge on the outside, because in this case, this outer edge is actually gonna press fit into another piece, so you would never be able to see that edge anyways. Now this guy here is also gonna be wrapped in vinyl, so before I adjust my bit or anything, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same to this piece. Next up here, I need to gap for carpet. So I've set back to zero, and for carpet, it requires 3 30 seconds of an inch. So I'm gonna go one full rotation, which is 1 16th, and then plus 1 30 second is 3 30 seconds. Now I can gap my big pieces here that will have the carpet wrapped. And in this case, I'm only gonna be going around the outside perimeter. So I've done the back side here for the carpet. You can see that gap there. And what I'm gonna do now is same thing, but I'm gonna do it on the top side of these, and that's gonna give me a nice little spot to nest the metal mesh. I've 
got that done. Again, this is the top side, that's for the metal mesh. Now the one last thing I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit more of a groove on the bottom side here, and I'm gonna make a nice big notch. I'm actually gonna go kind of deep into the material, and that's gonna be for if I wanted to add an LED strand around the outside to illuminate the amplifiers. I flipped it over and you can see now I have this nice little ledge that I could actually put the LED strip inside of. So let's go over everything real quick just to make sure that we have everything complete. Now I did this off camera actually before I even started this video. You can see that I made a rabbit around here. That's for the carpet on these pieces. So those two pieces are good. We've got our centerpiece on the back side. We're rabbited for our LEDs. We're also rabbited for our carpet. We're going to attach this piece in position just using some wood glue and the carpet will come up here. It will flow into this gap. We can use that hard edge to cut it. This piece will be completely wrapped in vinyl. So we have everything gapped on the back side there. We have all the gaps between the two pieces good to go. These gaps are good and the back side of these is also ready for vinyl. And last but not least, we have a gap here for our grill mesh. So there we have it, everything back in position. Now it may not seem like we actually did a whole lot in this video, but I just wanna tell you guys, making sure that you do all the gaps like we did in this video is just one of the most important things to really getting a perfect finish. When you don't take the time to do these gaps, you end up with panels that don't fit back together correctly. You end up with panels that are at different levels. This is super important, so make sure that you really commit to learning how to gap everything properly. If you enjoyed this video, I would love to have you as a subscriber. That way you'll be notified when I upload new tutorials, lessons, and reviews. Thank you to everyone out there for watching. A reminder, if you enjoy these videos, you can show your support by smashing that like button or by joining my Patreon support group down below. As always, a special thanks goes out to Eddie, Brian, Ali, Eric, Finchy, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon support team. Thank you guys for all your support. Stay tuned into the next video where we're gonna be wrapping all these different pieces with the different upholstery materials and putting everything together. Thanks again for watching.